Hey crew, it's Pitt, and I'm back with some more MBTI. Today we're going to be checking out the mind of Dana White, the owner of the UFC, from his appearance on Alec Fredman podcast. But before we do, before we begin, let's go ahead and talk about the system, because you have not seen MBTI done the way that I do it. I have changed some of the definitions. I have changed the way this works. So, we use this chart to ask these questions and sort people by the way that they think. Now, this is by no means a medical diagnosis. I am not a doctor. I have no desire to be. I am merely someone who has developed a system that can help you help you. It's for you to use to find examples in other people so that you can figure out how your mind works and figure out the things that are holding you back from achieving your full potential. Um, the questions that we ask are these. Are you focused on things or ideas? Is it about the here and now, the things that you can actually put your hands on from here into the past? Or is it about the ideas and the concepts and the things from here into the future? Do you do, uh, with those, do you gather new ones or sort through old ones? Is it all about, hey, look at this one, look at this one, look at this one? Or is it about, hey, everybody look at this one? Uh, do you do that for yourself or for the tribe? Self does not mean selfish. It means that you use it first and then you give it away. Tribe means you give it away and then you use it. Rigid and flexible. Are you my way or the highway? Or is it, let's accommodate some of these other people's thoughts and feelings. And finally, is it direct or informative? Do you give the whole explanation and stop? Or do you continue on? Do you give the whole explanation two, three, four times? Chase a couple of rabbit holes along the way. All of these combine together so that we can figure out how the mind works. We are looking for examples in someone else of how our mind works. We're looking for things that we identify in other people to help us identify things in ourselves. So we're going to look at this interview with Lex Fredman. Uh, this is Dana White on the Lex Fredman podcast. We're 17 minutes in so he could get good and comfortable. They're having a great repertoire or they're talking back and forth nice. I don't think repertoire is the right word, but rapport, that's the word. Uh, and so this is a good place to jump in and see what's up. We are looking for these five questions. Let's go. What's the origin story of the UFC as it is today, as you have created it and you and uh, Lorenzo and Petito Brothers built it? It started with with John Lewis, you know, and, and, and seeing him. Frank and I were out one night at the Hard Rock and John Lewis was there. Okay, so already we're dealing with actual things, right? It's not the concept behind it, but the actual thing that happened. It's all about this guy, which is a thing. It's all about this experience. Me and this guy were here. That's that's these things that have happened. And he's like, oh, that's that ultimate fighting guy. And I was like, I know him. And Frank's like, I've always wanted to learn uh, ground fighting. And I said, yeah, I'm interested in it too. So we went over, we talked to John Lewis, and we made an appointment to wrestle with him on Monday. Yeah. And we told Lorenzo, and Lorenzo came with us. And uh, that was the beginning of the end. I mean, we, we started doing jujitsu. Okay, so how did you come about this? We did these things, right? That's some tribe kickback straight off the top. So we're looking probably at an external focus. We're probably looking at the actual things. And, and started to meet a lot of the fighters. And we were like, you know, at the time there was a stigma attached to the sport that these guys were, you know, despicable, disgusting human beings, but which was the furthest thing from the truth. These these kids uh, had all gone to college, had college degrees, most of them, because they wrestled in college. And we started to meet some of them. We loved the different stories. You had Chuck Liddell, who, you know, had this... Again, this is some external focus, right? The, the reason why we've met these people. That's an external focus. Ohawk looks like an axe murderer and... Uh, but graduated from Cal Poly, uh, you know, w with honors and accounting, you know. Yeah. Then you had Matt Hughes, who was this farm boy, you know, literally lived on a farm. And so there were all these cool stories yeah. with all these good people that weren't what people thought they were. And Lorenzo and I always felt like there's something here. Th if this thing was done the right way, this could be big. And what was crazy was I uh, I was in a contract negotiation with Bob Meyerowitz, the old owner of the UFC, over Tito's contract um, and Chuck Liddell. They didn't even want Chuck Liddell in the UFC. Wow. I was trying to get Chuck in the UFC and they didn't even want him. Wow. And we got into this contract dispute over Tito's contract and Bob Meyerowitz said, you know what? There is no more money, okay? I don't even know if I'll even be able to put on one more event. And he like flipped out. 
when we hung up the phone, I literally picked up the phone and called Lorenzo and I said, hey, I just got off the phone with Bob Myers, the owner of the UFC. I think they're in trouble and I think we could buy it and I think we should. You should reach out to him. So Lorenzo, uh, Lorenzo called Meyerowitz and I don't know how, I don't remember the timeline, but within the next two months, we ended up owning the UFC for two million bucks. Okay, so what we're looking so far, right? This is very much grounded in the actual things that have happened. Whether it is the one best thing or the many things being held open is a little bit up for debate, but we haven't really at all touched on the ideas and the concepts behind, right? This is not about looking forward as much as grasping the opportunity in front of. So this appears to be more things than ideas. Uh, I'm still not sure on the new and old, but he does seem to be fairly externally focused, right? It's not about me. It's not about I. It's not about I'm going to build this thing. It's about we can do this. It's about us. It's about the tribe, right? It's about the stories. All of that feeds into the tribe-centered part of it. The rigid and flexible seems to be a little bit flexible. We're still going to look for some confirmations on that, but he has had it already, right, flexing around the situation not necessarily the people as much but the situation for sure uh being flexible to learn is a thing too so uh, it does seem to be more on the flexible side than the control side but we'll we'll wait and see on that and it seems to be more on the informative side than the direct side he's not chasing rabbit holes forever but we did go down a couple of rabbit holes in that little short explanation right we got a couple of backstories on some people that weren't necessarily the meat we needed to answer the question. And so those rabbit holes and the extent of the answer leans me more towards informative than direct. It doesn't mean we're there yet, but that's where I'm leaning so far off of just the one question. And uh, you've said that you fought a lot of battles during that time. Oh. I mean, the early days of, of building this company and building the sport it was the wild wild west man it was it was crazy back then that's an idea right it was crazy back then it was wild wild west our ideas but they seem to be in support of the thing that happened right um yeah I, I was literally at war every day with all different types of people war is a little bit of a hyperbolic thing but plus traditionally there's bad people that are involved in in fighting man there's lots of bad people and gain some ideas. And we had to sift our way through that. And we had to sift our way through that. The first seven, eight years. So in general, there's like corruption. The people kind of steal money. They're thinking just about themselves, not the bigger business. Well, let me tell you about this. I mean, I, I, I want to say it was the Netherlands. I don't remember exactly where. It could have been Amsterdam. I mean, MMA promoters were like car bombing each other. And <laughs> then the other yeah. guy shot up the other guy's house wow. with machine guns and... That's the kind of shit that was going on. Here are some things, right? Not necessarily the full detail of the thing, not necessarily all of it. And we got that in the examples before, right? When he brought out his examples of the people. It's just a brief shot of this thing happened. It's not really a deep dive into it. I'll tell you the story. So, Affliction. Do you remember Affliction? Yeah. Uh -huh. So, there was a guy. I, I want to say, I want to... I want to say his name was Tom Todd Beard or something like that. This guy used to text me every day when they were when they started their MMA thing, and telling me he was going to kill me. Like legitimately, legitimately going to kill me. Yeah. You punk motherfucker! I'm going to fucking kill you. Try to push back. You don't understand who I am and what I've done and this and that. I think this guy would get drunk or do drugs every night or whatever his deal was. This guy would call me text me and threaten my life every day i used to go fuck you and this you said and fuck you oh, like a... oh yeah okay so now that's some control right uh, especially back then like that's not accommodating now you shouldn't be accommodating that but that's definitely not accommodating that yeah but yeah but th i mean th this is the type of shit that went on in the early days th these, this guy this guy who was one of the owners of affliction was like one of the you know not, not a good human let's put it that way what about the business side of it tough to make money in this business yeah we weren't making money so you know trying to build this thing corrupt uh, corrupt uh, the guys that work for in-demand pay-per-view at the time uh, were not good dudes you know and that thing was a fucking total monopoly god I wish I could remember his name right now 
he used to run in demand and he was like, that's some detail adver- advertisement right he's had a couple of examples of that not quite knowing if he remembered the name correctly forgetting the name that's detail aversion right that's more hold the ideas or things open as opposed to remember this one specific thing and this one specific person who did this one specific thing fucking bad guy then he then he comes and this whole he's a bad guy right that's making judgments about people that is more control than it is flexible the corruption right that's more control than it is people it sometimes you have to flex around a situation until you can enact your control on it and that seems to be where that is oh it's not about well we're going to accommodate these corrupt people it's they're here we're going to get rid of them but we can't so that's leaning more towards the control side of things than the the flexibility side of things. Was over and starts running Direct TV, who we always had a great relationship with, and he's the reason we left Direct TV and said fuck it, we'll just go streaming then. Yeah, I don't remember his name. I'd have to ask Lorenzo. But this detail did happen. Keep it up. Keep it in your mind. So in general, just in this whole space, there's a lot of yeah, it's just shady people. Everybody you deal with is you're dealing with a lot of lot of lot of different forces, and and, and your, your your hands are in a lot of different. Some of them are sponsors, huh? Businesses, uh, you know, from the venue business to the merchandise business to the video game business, uh, the pay per view business. You know, the list goes on and on of all the different types of the production business of all these different, you know, when I first started this, I, uh, we had a production team that was the production team that was in it before we bought it. He started off with an I in this sentence, right? And immediately switched to we twice. So there was this, there was this incident with Phil Baroni where Phil Baroni, we did an interview with him and Baroni flips out Mm -hmm. in the interview when they're interviewing him and goes crazy. And I thought it was awesome. So I'm like, yeah. we're going to leave this in. We're going to leave this interview in. And the, and the production guys were arguing with me. They're like, we can't leave this in. This is totally unprofessional. And I said, I don't give a shit. That's control. This is, this is what we're doing. We're going we're gonna to do this and clip it like this and do it like that. We're sitting in the venue that night. And I lean over to Lorenzo because the fight's coming up. I go, wait till you see this fucking interview with Peroni. They didn't fucking do it. They didn't do it. These guys were guys that were freelance guys that worked for Showtime at the time or one of the, something like that. Mess. I literally went, got up from my fucking seat, went back there, kicked the fucking door of the truck open. And I said, you motherfuckers, you ever do that again and I'll fire every fucking one of you. That's some control, baby. Let's, and not, control is not always unwarranted, right? Sometimes it can be overbearing, but for the most part, you should have some control. Some of us are way too flexible and we have to learn control. Some of us have control built in. Some of us are way too controlling. He seems to be more towards the middle, but leaning towards the control side of things. Again, he seems to be on the informative side of things. He's not going wild with it, but he is extrapolating in places that it doesn't necessarily need to be. We're going to look for some more confirmation of that real quick. It seems to be more about hold open the experiences, right? These are new experiences. These are... Not necessarily the best experiences. Just put it this way. I ended up firing every one of them anyway and, and going with a whole new crew. But th- these were the type of things that early on, you know, there's so much stuff. And that's try pushback, right? Try focus. I mean, I can sit here for fucking three days and walk you through all the stuff that used to go on back in those days. Uh, but it was the wop. <laughs> but I'm not going to. There's a whole bunch of them, but I'm not going to tell you what they are. A Wild West, man. And again, the idea to support the things. How'd you figure out, how'd you know how to deal with all this mess? First of all, to fire people, to fire people that aren't doing a good job, all that. Like, how to be a leader, how to be... Well, that's... All right, we're going to go ahead and do the typology here because I think we've seen enough to go ahead and do that. And I like to I like to get a little bit more time on the, the confirmation side. So, <clears throat> it seems to be things, right? So, we're looking um, at the left-hand side of the columns. He seems to be new things which is going to put us all the way to the left he seems to be outward focus uh so that's going to put us in the bottom two rows and he seems to be more controlled than flexible so that's going to be an estp 
and I'm gonna go ahead and pop a graphic over so we can talk about this last variable real quick. And the final thing is the direct and informative. Now the first two slots here, uh, the divine and the crown, are about how you receive the information. You get the information from the divine, you feel responsible for it in the crown. You communicate back, right? You see forward with the third eye and you communicate back with the throat. So the third slot is how you do that. Is it introverted or extroverted? Are you direct or informative? If you are direct, then you're holding the energy back for yourself. That is an introverted slot. And if you are informative, you are just giving away all of the information as fast as you can. And that makes you extroverted. He seems to be more on the informative side than the direct side now. Uh, so that's going to put an extroverted third slot, which means that he's going to be an ESTP and not an alternate. What does that mean, Pitt? The ESTP is going to be very much concerned with and pick up without even knowing all the experiences, right? He doesn't detail them. He doesn't keep track of them in excruciating uh, minutia, right? It is more about here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the thing. He notices all these things. It is without spending too much time diving into them, right? This is a great brand new shiny experience. He feels responsible for his logic, right? And what he is going to be using to, to ensure that these things are held open for the tribe is his logic. This is how I think about the thing. You should think about the thing the same way. Hey, look at all these things. Isn't, aren't I doing the most logical thing, bringing you all of these things? His own personal thoughts in the situation are what's going to be his determining factor in gathering the things and making sure that you feel the way about them. The third eye is how you see forward. It is your vision into your future. And so you get defensive over it. For him, that's going to be what everyone feels, the ethics of the situation. We just got a really good example of that as he was talking about the corruption in the early days of the UFC. He felt responsible for his logic in the situation, but it was kicking back off of these ethics. Now, you get your ethics from the tribe. Your morals are derived from the ethics that you learn, but the tribe's not necessarily everyone. It's who you consider your tribe. It is the people that you bring into your life. It can be your family, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. It can be your work people, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. But it is definitely your friends, right? The people that you choose to be in your circle is where you get your ethics from. He saw the corruption and he got very defensive over it. So much so that he took care of it. Um, the throat is what you're going to have a problem communicating. It's where you're going to misunderstand things and it is where you are going to miscommunicate things giving it back. <clears throat> and for him, that is going to be the NI, which is the individual ideas, right? The narrowing it down to this is the best way forward. This is the best path. This is the best idea. He's going to misunderstand that. It's not that he doesn't, he's not able to make the decision. It's not that he's unable to, to make the correct decision. It's just a little bit harder. You have to spend more time because it's farther down in the stack. You're getting too much negative information in that slot. And so you, you have to take the extra time to make sure that you are actually picking the best way forward. Picking the UFC, right when he got off the phone and he's like, hey, I think we can buy that. That's picking the best way forward. That is jumping on that fairly quickly. He did that off of all the ethics. He did that off of this experience, right? What he really wants to do is your heart slot. Your heart slot is what you want to do with your life. And for him, that is giving the best experience, right? Now, normally SI is about my best experience, but he is externally focused. So he's trying to get the best experience out of giving the best experience. UFC is a very good indicator of that. He wants this to be the best fight there is. It's better than boxing. It's better than the individual MMA sports. It is the one place where all of the experience comes together for the best experience. He does that through what other people think. Your solar plexus feeds your heart. So what you consume in your solar plexus feeds into what you want to do with your life. He's getting the feedback from the tribe. What is everybody's thoughts on this situation? And he uses that to make sure that they have the best experience. 
The sacral and the base are where you get tripped up. There's a lot of negative energy there. There's a lot of positive energy at the top, a lot of negative energy at the bottom, and you have to be more intentional in how you interpret that information. For him, the sacral spot is, well, for everyone, the sacral spot is where the trickster energy is. It's the sexual energy. It is where you unintentionally, intentionally choose the wrong thing. Nobody ever says, hey, I want to do the wrong thing, but people do it all the time. It's generally because of these two slots. For him, that's going to be misunderstanding morals, right? Now, FI is all about my morals. That is based off of the tribe's ethics, but maybe the tribe's not right. Maybe you're misunderstanding what the tribe is actually ethically involved in there. Maybe you're misinterpreting something about how you feel about the situation. Because the FI is all about my feelings, my decisions on what is the best, most moral thing to do. The base, <clears throat> the base is where you just get it wrong because it is really bad information coming in. You have to be very intentional about choosing it. And for him, that is holding the ideas open, right? He's really good at holding the things open, but he's no good at holding the ideas open. He's got this one idea in the stack, but it's low in the stack. He thinks it's the best idea, and so he won't even look at the other ideas. Strengthening yourself as an ESTP is all about learning how to see these ideas and to take them in too. They may not be the best ones, but you need to consider them. You need to at least expand the scope of your best idea to consider the possibility that there might be something to add to that. And really strengthening that base is going to make a whole lot of difference. If you strengthen the base and the sacral, the whole rest of the stack kind of starts to fall in line on its own. If you identify with any of these things that we have just talked about with Mr. Dana White, if you think that maybe you are an ESTP, we have a video for you. If you think that maybe you want to try this system out, we've got a whole playlist for that. We talk about how through prayer, meditation, and fasting, you can take these things and start to strengthen your own self. You can take this framework that I am giving you, this toolbox that I am giving you, and you can start to use it for yourself to strengthen yourself from the bottom up. If that's a little bit too woo-woo for you and you don't like prayer, fasting, and meditation, I have just the MBTI parts. That's a little bit more on the scientific bend of that. I do mention the other things, but it's not the focus of it. The point of this whole system is so that you can find examples in other people so that you can improve yourself in the way that you want to improve yourself. So this framework gives you the ability to start at the bottom and slowly build yourself up into the person that you want to be. Now we're going to be looking for some confirmations. We're going to watch a few more minutes of the podcast, and we're going to get into um, whether he is holding the ideas open without even, re or the, the things open without even really thinking about it, and whether he is using his logic to make these things happen. We're going to look and see if maybe he's pushing back against the ethics. We have had confirmation of that already. We're going to look at the throat and see if he is miscommunicating the singular idea, if he is misunderstanding the singular idea. We're going to look at the base and see if he is misunderstanding or missing other possibilities, right? Other ways forward. And we're going to look and see if he is unintentionally, intentionally choosing the wrong side of the morals. But light, let's dig in and see what's up with the confirmation. Thank you. I mean, business leader. Get, get, getting it in the early days, there was two employees, me and another girl that, you, that, that worked for me for my company before I started doing this. And then we slowly started to bring people on and you start to build a team. And then before you know it, we had 10 people. I mean, we used to do our Christmas parties back then too. There'd be eight to 10 people at our Christmas party, you know? Um, but a lot of it is uh, you learn as you go, you know? You know what me and the Fertitas knew about production when we bought this UFC? Mm -hmm. We had like, I wanna say we had two or three weeks to pull off of an event. This is what we knew about production. Really? Jack shit. So we had to dive in and we had to learn it. We had to figure it out and we, um, we knew what we wanted. We knew what we liked. We knew that's that's not getting into the details, right? That is holding the ideas or the things open. We knew what we wanted. We knew what we liked, but we didn't know how to do it. What, what we were looking we, we knew about these experiences, but not how to enact them. Looking for, um, it's just about building building a good team, and I think that's one of the things. If if you want to, that can be construed as a logic situation, right? Building a good team is using your logic. Now, a lot of that goes back into the ethics. Talk about what I've accomplished in the last, you know, 25 years of my life. I've been really good at building teams. 
already have a vision of what you want the final that external focus i don't think to look like and then build well, a team that can bring that to life 100 percent. well i've got this best idea i need a team to make it happen you, you, you have that's an ethics focus to have the vision without the vision there's nothing so th that's sort of what i do um yeah. i i am the vision part of, the, of this thing we're gonna open a a pi in mexico we're gonna uh do this we're gonna do that you know and then uh this and that right detail detail of verse uh, and then you you build the team to, to come in and help execute try to focus a lot of people that do uh fighting promotions fail you succeeded against long odds uh what's the secret to your success if you would just looking back over the years well the secret to success i would say first of all is passion and consistency you have to love what you do you have to get up every day and i i, I get here every day at 9 30 in the morning when we sold in 2016 a lot of people in the company made a lot of money and they all took off and they retired yeah. right um other than the fertitas i made the most money i'm still here i get here at 9 30 every morning last night i left here at 8 30 yeah. You know, and I don't know how late I'm going to be here tonight, but yeah. I love what I do. We get up every day and grind. I work just as hard now as I did back then. The difference between back then and now is I don't have to do a bunch of the shit that I don't really like to do, like budget meetings. I don't like budget meetings. <laughs> I don't want these details. Give me the experiences. I sat through enough fucking budget meetings. <laughs> Horrible budget yeah. meetings. Horrible. Yeah. You know, we're losing you know millions of dollars a year and i'm in these in these budget meetings um you know so i get to pick and choose what i do these days back yeah. in the early days you don't get to pick and choose you have to be a, involved in everything yeah so costs you're just looking at costs 100 percent. you literally go through <laughs> yeah. line by line every fucking yeah. number in the company and where did the money go and how can we save costs <laughs> fuck these details <laughs> how can we do this better how can we you know they are they, they they are brutal and they're multiple times a week and probably helps it deeply but because you took in the thoughts of these other people and did the detail work now you have the most successful fighting company in the world right the ufc is on the top that is because he did the heart and the solar plexus part right he took in the thoughts from the solar plexus and used that to get the best experience appreciate how much this shit costs like people. that's maturity in the stats though 100 percent. well you have to like when you see successful people like this and he is doing the heart and the solar plexus part right that is almost universal to know that yeah in the early days, even if they're still getting tripped up in the base and the solar or uh, the base and the sacred days when you start your business you have these people who when i hear them say you know what i uh I want to work for myself. I want to create my own schedule and I want to do all the. Yeah. Look at this child push back on these ethics. It's just, it's, it, if, if that's your thought process going into it, you're never going to be successful. You have to pay attention to every single detail of the business early on. You're involved in everything. There's no days off. There's no birthdays. There's no fucking Christmas. There's none of that shit. I literally moved the birth of my second son for a Chuck Liddell fight. We had a Chuck Liddell fight coming up, and I, and they're like, "Yeah, your son's gonna be born on this date," and I'm like, "Yeah, that's not gonna work." <laughs> okay. We're gonna. Have that's an idea to hold on to. I have to yeah. take him earlier. Yeah. So they literally gave my wife a C-section and 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 took. There's no control involved in that at all. Took my son early. You're all in. All in. Yeah. And the the fascinating thing, like you said, you uh, you've said that you could care less about money. You're doing this for for the love of it. Yeah. I was doing this when I was broke. Yeah. And I'm doing this now when I'm not broke. I'm doing this because I love it. And I, and I, I feel like there's so much more to do. And this is truly my passion in life. It's like the sphere. We're doing the sphere. Why? Why would I do the sphere? It's going to cost me a bunch of money. It's, 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 it's about the experience. Really challenging. Um, most people think it can't be pulled off, and uh, you're looking at weird angles, different things going on inside other than the fight and all this other stuff, but yeah, I'm doing it because 
it's awesome and it's challenging and it's hard. And I think that if yeah. anybody can do it right, it's us. So why not take that challenge? It's actually why. And that whole thing right there, that's a good way to wrap this one up because we did get some good confirmations off of that. It seems like he is about giving the experiences, right? That is what he is about doing. He is doing that through his logic. I decide that these things are the steps to take and we do it. It's about pushing back on the tribe. We have seen several examples of pushing back against the ethics of others, right? Even just right there, <clears throat> talking about the work ethic, right? You don't have the grind to be an entrepreneur if your mindset is this. That is very much being defensive about the ethics of the situation. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of examples of not looking at ideas, but you have to be given ideas to ignore them. And we didn't have a whole lot about the, the feelings of the situation, but we did get to see some confirmations of him using the thoughts of others in order to give the best experience, which is what he wants to do. He is fully invested in that in his life. It is about giving people the best fight experience, and he does that through the feedback of his tribe. It's a fairly good, at, um, it's a fairly good typology confirmation for me. The link is provided down below to the entirety of the podcast. It is always recommended that you go and check it out. Go and see if you agree. Go and see the full context of the situation. Go back and watch the whole thing so that you know what they're talking about. See if I'm correct. See if I'm wrong. Let me know in the comments down below. Either way, I'm here to learn just as much as everybody else. This system seems to work. It worked for me. I completely changed my life by enacting these things in my life. I have had other people do the same thing. The whole point of this is to give you the framework to build yourself up, to find the things that you keep doing wrong in consistent manners, this, making the same wrong choices. Why do I keep doing these same things? That's the point of the system, to help you find out that, yeah, that's your base and your trickster, trying to hold you back. And to give you the tools to overcome that. What do I need to do in order to make myself better? I've got a whole playlist devoted to that. Hopefully I brought a little bit of enlightenment and not too much confusion to a somewhat difficult topic. I do MBTI completely differently than everybody else. My definitions are the same. An introvert is not a wallflower. An extrovert is not the life of the party. Necessarily. It's about your focus. It's about what goes, what goes on in your mind to the crew. Thanks for hanging out. I appreciate every single minute that you are here with me, and I am praying for you every single day. Until next time, I love you. God loves you. You are perfect, whole, and complete just the way that you are. And this has been Pitt's Take. Peace.